So, how's it going, everyone? A quick question, has anyone ever, uh, or can you raise your hand if you've submitted a PR with a release note? Nice, a few, for sure. So I'm Marpaya on Slack, and on GitHub, on Twitter, I'm Mike Arpaya because Marpaya was taken, so, you know, nice to meet y'all in person. Uh, I was on the release team for 111, 112, and 113, working on release notes, and uh, I wrote this, I wrote the outline of this deck while copy editing the release notes document for 113, so I also edited out all the snark afterwards. But, so if you're not familiar, I wanna just go through the developer process for submitting release notes and then offer some tips and tricks that you might not be aware of about how you can uh, you know, change the way you write release notes that makes the release team's life easier and makes your release note higher quality. So the process, if you're not familiar, if you've ever created a PR against Kubernetes, it looks a little like this and there is like a whole wall of text and you kind of have to go through and fill in all of the questions that it asks you. And all the way at the bottom, there's a little block that says backtick, 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 release dash note, empty space. And if you have a release note, you can fill it in there. And if you don't have a release note, ideally you write the word none. Now, if you don't write the word none, this happens and you get the bot saying like, hey, you have to uh, either write a release note or use the prow command, release note none. So you do that and that's awesome. And all of this is outlined on um, this document in a Kubernetes community repository, which isn't super discoverable, but I guess that's a problem with a lot of Kubernetes community documents sometimes. Um, so generally everyone does this and towards the end of the release, what happens is uh, there's some tooling that we have that goes through and uh, iterates through all of the pull requests that have uh, landed in master from the last release to when we wanna cut the new release and it kind of parses through them, looks at each commit, sees if the PR that introduced that commit has a release note, pulls as many labels as we can from that uh, PR and then tries to generate a document that's as contextualized as possible given all the labels that you added and everything we can infer from your pull request. So that's the process now for the tips and tricks. So one thing you might not know about release notes is that you can edit your note after your PR has been merged. So, um, you know, pre, I'd say before 112, the uh, note that is in, that was in your PR used to make it into the actual commit message in master, that's no longer the case, but either way, um, all of the tooling that generates release notes documents pulls the note text from your PR at the time of document generation, which is usually at the end of the release. So if you land a PR early in the release and uh, you don't like the release note text, feel free to go and change it. Uh, the other thing is uh, write like you're from the future. So this is an interesting thing that I've thought about a lot as I've changed the tense on various words in people's, uh, people's release notes over time, but when you write your PR, you write as if you're from, you know, it's very, you know, if this diff is merged, this will happen and stuff like that. You're writing about the future, but what you have to consider is that when a user is gonna be reading your release note, they're gonna be um, reading it in the future, in several months from now. So write, uh, you know, things in the past tense. This thing was bumped, not, you know, when this PR is merged, it will be bumped and stuff like that. So, you know, I had a counter as I was going through this last release's uh, notes and, you know, this is in order of the top amount of things that I changed. Now, I do have some tooling to go and edit these automatically, but it's not always, um, you know, you can't always update, you can't always change update to updated. It doesn't always work out that way. The other thing uh, that I would implore you to do is use more sig and kind labels if you can. So your sig, uh, if you add like slash sig cluster lifecycle, that'll sh uh, you know categorize your note in the cluster lifecycle section of the document. If you add multiple sigs, that's a little less helpful uh, for the release note document, but still help more helpful than no sigs. And then uh, you know there are several kind labels that you can use that'll add your note to various sections of the document, which is super useful. Uh, the last bits are don't write notes for non-user facing changes. Now the text in the release notes document says uh, is your feature or do you want to document any uh, user facing changes? So, you know, don't be afraid to release note none and, uh, you know, capitalize the first letter of the sentence. 
It's always useful, always helpful. Uh, and finally, use markdown formatting. So if you're referencing a new flag that's being added or something like that, uh, wrap it in back ticks and uh, all that good stuff. So that's it with three seconds left. So thank you all. Nice.